So if you're in two car audio, you hear this almost all the time. It's one of the most important things to get correct in a car audio system, but it also applies for home theater. What we're talking about is RMS power versus max power. What do they mean to you and why you should care? Why you should pay close attention to that? Let's talk about it. If you're into car audio, you're gonna see RMS and max power ratings all the time. It's one of the most important things you must pay attention to when you're building a car audio system. But home audio also has a role in paying attention to RMS versus max power ratings. RMS stands for root mean square. And what this means to you is how much continuously something can either take or give in terms of power. So for example, if I have a speaker that's rated at 100 watts RMS, this means that this speaker can handle and produce 100 watts all day long with no problem. If I have an amplifier rated at 1000 watts RMS, it means that my amplifier can give me 1000 watts all day long with no issues. If I have a subwoofer for car audio that says it can handle 1000 watts RMS, it means that I can put an amplifier and send it 1000 watts all day long with no issue. So RMS is just a continuous power rating. How much power can my speaker or my amplifier handle over a long period of time? Now you're gonna see something called max power or peak power. Also, if you're looking at spec sheets, that is how much power that particular device or speaker can handle at a short burst. Not all day, just for a few seconds. Not even a couple minutes for a few seconds. So if you have a speaker that's rated at 400 watts RMS, 800 watts peak, that's telling you that 400 watts, I can eat that all day long, give it to me, no problem. But 800, I can do it, but just for a moment. Think of the 400 watt RMS as a steady jog. I can do this 400 watt steady jog all day long. But 800 is a sprint. It's a quick burst of speed, but I gotta back off pretty quickly. I've used all my energy. You can think of RMS as a brief jog setting pace and think of the max power as a quick burst of speed, but it can't be sustained over a long period of time. This is very important for you to understand RMS versus max power ratings and to be aware of companies that trick you into believing one thing over another. When you're matching speakers with amplifiers, which is where this matters the most, you wanna pay attention to the RMS rating or the continuous power rating because this is how we know how much power to give to our speakers, or this is how we learn how to match speakers and amplifiers together. If I have a 500 watt RMS subwoofer, I wanna find an amplifier that also is 500 watts RMS. Why? Because my 500 watt RMS subwoofer can handle that amount of power with no issues, no overheating, there's no over excursion, there's no distortion, there's no clipping. It's gonna be good, 500 watts. You wanna match your speaker's power to an amplifier of the same rating to make sure that they can handle all the power anytime you want them to. Let's say I have a 500 watt RMS speaker and I pair it with a thousand RMS amplifier you can run into problems because your speaker's only rated to handle 500, but if I power it with a thousand watt amplifier, I could damage my speaker with too much power. Now, I don't want you to get confused and say, wait, if I have a 2000 watt amplifier, can I not put a thousand watt speaker to it? You can. You're not always gonna give that speaker the max power. It depends on the volume level, the frequencies, ohms, so on and so forth. So you can pair a lower powered speaker to a higher powered amplifier, but you have to make sure you keep the volume down, or if in car audio, make sure you lower the gain to make sure that you're not giving too much power to that speaker. Now when it comes to amplifiers, let's say I have a 1000 watt RMS amplifier. I wanna find a subwoofer that's also a 1000 watts RMS as well. If I put a 2000 watt RMS subwoofer to my 1000 watt RMS amplifier, then I can damage both the amplifier and the speaker. One, because I'm underpowering the speaker by 1000 watts, remember, 2000 watts RMS means I can handle that all day, but if my amplifier can't give me those 2000 watts, then it can cause your speakers to blow prematurely, 
distortion, clipping, so on and so forth, just like it could if you overpowered it. Your amplifier is only rated for 1,000 watts RMS, so if you have a speaker asking for more than 1,000 watts, then your amplifier will struggle, will overheat, and it will not work for long. So you wanna make sure you're matching your power rings together. And that applies for home theater as well. If you're looking for external amplification, for example, maybe you have five speakers and you wanna to go to seven or go to 11, but you need external amplification. You wanna make sure that you buy an amplifier that can handle the amount of power that your speakers may ask for. Otherwise, you may harm your speakers, your amplifier, or both. Now there is one major snake oil in the audio industry, both on car audio and in home audio equally, and that's that max power rating. A lot of manufacturers won't tell you the RMS rating of their gear, they'll tell you the max power. Why? Well, because max power looks better on paper. If I have a speaker that's 50 watts RMS, but I put on my box 100 watts max, it's gonna, your mind, your eyes, your money is gonna to gravitate towards the bigger power rating, even if it's a little misleading. You have to be careful. When you're doing your research and you're looking for a speaker, you're looking for a subwoofer, or you're looking for an amplifier, you wanna make sure that you search for the RMS rating. That is all that matters to you. Yes, max power is cool. It's nice to know the full capabilities of that device, of that speaker, but the RMS rating is what's more important. What can I give or take from that device over a long period of time? That is what's important to you and nothing else. So make sure that you check for the RMS rating or the continuous power rating. That's what matters to you most, especially when you're comparing products. If you're comparing one subwoofer to another or one speaker brand to another speaker brand of similar price, you may want to go with the one that has the most power. You want to look for RMS ratings. That will tell you how much power that speaker or that subwoofer or that amplifier can give or take at a given time over a long period of time. Make sure you're looking for the RMS continuous rating. Now wait for all my nerds out there who are typing away talking about what about one ohm, four ohm, two ohms. We're not gonna get into ohms and impedances in this video. I do have a video already talking about what is ohms, what are ohms, what is impedance. I do have a video dedicated to talking about power ratings and matching the ohms, but I'm not gonna do that in this video as that is a huge rabbit hole to go down. I don't wanna do it, I've done it before. So if you're interested in that video, if you type in K-Face Guy, what are ohms? That video should pop up explaining to you all about how to match your ohm ratings, one ohms, two ohms, four ohms, to your speakers and amplifiers. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what your setup is. If you're car audio, what power rating are you running right now? For example, for me, I have a 5,000 watt RMS amplifier on my sub in my Alfa Romeo uh, Stelvio, my SUV killer sound system. And then in my home, I'm running a four ohm amplifier with 310 watts to go into all my speakers. So let me know what you're running power wise in your car audio or home theater setup. I'm curious to know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and we'll see you in the next video. K-Base guy out. Peace.